All right, so I thought I'd end my DjangoCon week by doing some testing of DjangoProject.com for accessibility issues. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to keep my testing to just the home page. I'm only going to use built-in features of Chrome as well as an extension called Accessibility Insights, which contains quite a big range of testing tools within it. Um, so the sites, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go through my, my normal checks. The first thing I do with testing a site is to try the keyboard support. So I reload the page and simply tab through the page and see where my tabs tab takes me. So the first thing I notice here is uh, normally on, on, on most sites, I'd expect the first thing I tab to to be a, a skip link to the site's main content. Uh, That's just a very common best practice. So people who rely on the keyboard don't have to skip through the navigation menus every single time they go to a page. So the fact that it's missing here is a, is a bit concerning. Uh, so the second thing I, I notice here is the usage of uh, custom focus styles for the logo right there. So generally custom focus styles are a bit of an anti-pattern um, in the web these days. Browser default styles are really, really more than good enough. And um, the only place where custom styles might be appropriate is if they are even easier to see than um, browser default styles, which I, I don't think is the case here. So we'll keep paying attention. And yeah, so here as well, I can see that uh, the styles have been implemented in a way that um, not always necessarily fully visible. And um, definitely I, I would expect this specific custom focus style to fail um, we had guidelines for focus indications so it seems to be cropped at the top and bottom here I'm not sure whether this is intentional or not but it's definitely not um, enough indication of where the focus is okay so this last element here the theme switcher that does seem to at least partly use the browser default styles so again here it's partly obstructed, we can only see the full indicator to the left, which uh, means there'd be a bit of, of work even for that to have appropriate focus. Um, so telling away from that, right away I notice as well that uh, I'm not quite clear where the focus is anymore. It might be on this Castle with Django button, which does not seem to have a focus style at all, so that, that would be quite concerning. And it's exactly why we tend to recommend against uh, overriding browser default styles unless the replacement styles are guaranteed to be more visible. So the next thing I notice here while I tap through is that um, we've completely skipped the contents of this sidebar. So at least visually, it seems to me like the CTA to download to the right was quite important. So it's a bit surprising that um, tabbing through this, I get further down. Uh, it probably makes complete sense in terms of how the content is structured, but that means that for a keyboard user to reach this download button, they'd have to tab through the whole of the page and then go back up and tab through the, the sidebar. Um, at least in this case of the home page, this sidebar does feel like it has quite fundamental information and call to actions. So it, it does feel quite problematic that keyboard users have to again go through all the way down and then back up and through the aside. Um, my browser extension has a good way to assess this, uh, this, this tab stops tool where we can visualize how many tab stops it takes to reach a particular element. Okay, so we're tapping through those two forms. And yeah, so then back up in 24 tabs. So again, in terms of visual hierarchy, really there, there ought to be, first of all, a skip link. That would be tab stop number one. So activating that, I'll be able to get to this Get Started with Django button with two tab stops. And at least visually, I had expected download to be the third tab, tab stop. It doesn't have to be the case, but it's just like my expectation as I interact with this. And then yeah, so down through the side sidebar, so again, if the sidebar is quite secondary content, that might be okay, but uh, in this case, it does seem like um, it would make more sense for this to be all in a single column for the sake of keyboard users. Um, I'll just check quickly whether there's anything else to notice. So again, yeah, the, 
the, the focus styles, uh, this, this kind of focus style is quite concerning. Um, it's really not visible enough for someone who relies on this to navigate the site. And yes, the same on those headers. Yes, yeah, so on those form fields as well, just changing the color and nothing else. I would say is isn't enough for the focus to be clearly uh, associated with that specific part of the page. It's much better to just always have an outline that's quite thick. So again, with, with those links, I notice as well that uh, it's just the outline. So uh, it makes me want to jump to another type of testing. If I if I disable the colors and view the site in grayscale, so simulating um, color vision issues that uh, might, might never be that extreme, but it's a good test nonetheless. Uh, I see right away that it becomes really hard to tell what is a link and what is just text because most links are only uh, denotated with color rather than an underline or similar. So for example, here further down, I can see mailing list documentation. This is underlined. There is no doubt in my mind that this is a link. Whereas um, here in the sidebar, uh, between ticket system and report bugs, I really have no idea which one of these two is the link and which one might be a heading or just plain text. Um, yeah, same for those headings here on the main column. So using Django, I have no idea whether it's just a heading or a link. Uh, if I had those, that kind of color vision deficiency. So again, much better here for links to simply always have an underline or if not have some kind of icon next to them could be considered acceptable. But yeah, really just the, the underline is the, the go-to if in doubt. So we'll go through other forms of testing now. Of turn on the colors back again and we look through those headings that we just mentioned. Um, so here I visualize for the different headings of the page what uh, level they are at. So H1 will be the top level heading of the page. So first off, uh, it is quite concerning that there are two H1s on this page. I expect there to only be one uh, as a general rule. So to be decided which of these two should be the H1, but definitely only one. That's the thing that people who use screen readers will jump to right away. They want to skip the navigation and navigate heading by heading. So it's going to be very confusing for people that there is two H1s like this. So these right there, ridiculously fast, reassuringly secure. Again, it probably would be nice for them to be headings, just so people can jump straight to those different uh, parts. But it's it's only a nice to have, not, not a must. Um, so over in the sidebar, I can see there's quite a bit of a hierarchy here. Um, not quite clear why there is so much text in this H3 right there. Latest news does feel like a good heading, but then this, uh, this above, probably not so much. Uh, it almost looks like something that might not be intentional, like an HTML parsing issue. And uh, support Django here, I guess. I'm a bit surprised that latest news is in a heading within a support Django section. So it could be that either it's a mistake or just the heading needs a different label. Yeah, so new to Django, the power of Django as well. This doesn't feel like they belong in a support Django section. So it might be confusing for people who rely on this type of navigation when they want to find those items. Um, and yes, yeah, so there's another H1 here. So again, this shouldn't happen. There should, shouldn't be three H1s per page and it feels like we're more of an H2 for this specific section. Okay, and there's another H1 in the footer. So <laughs> I guess it probably is just an element to help pinpoint the footer. So that could be useful, but again, it shouldn't be an H1. So we look at landmarks now, which are an another form of uh, semantic markup for people to find parts of the page more easily. Uh, navigation, banner, that looks correct. Uh, this not being in landmark is concerning. 
I'm not sure if it's a best practice or a proper uh, failure, but it generally would be better for all content of the page to be in a landmark. So these are to be in uh, the main landmark, most likely. And yeah, so this, this uh, sidebar is uh, marked as complementary. So um, again, my understanding of complementary would be that it's uh, relatively secondary information that isn't necessarily something you're always meant to look at. So in this case, it does feel a bit problematic to me that visually, as well as semantically, this is marked as something that's not as important as what's to the left. Uh, it probably ought to be a, a single column layout, at least for the home page. Yeah, and the footer, okay, so that's, that's all right. So I guess we could maybe have a navigation landmark here to find those links more easily, but footer, contents info, that's all correct. Accessible names, so just for things that are that have images, uh, it's useful to look at uh, how those images are communicated. Um, so it looks like right there we have a, the H1 we had is just a text jangle. So considering there is quite visible text here that looks like a heading, that is pretty concerning of a pattern because it means that someone who's, which sees the site would expect this to be a heading. Someone which goes through the screen reader would expect the heading to just be Django. It could be very confusing if you just can perceive both because you're a sighted screen reader user or if two people work on the site at the same time to figure out what they're talking about if the headings are different based on sighted or screen reader usage. So good to see on the, on the right here that the theme switcher has a proper label and not just the icon. Good to see as well that those icons that are qu quite really decorative don't have uh, a label for them. Uh, but here in the sidebar, it is a bit strange that this uh, donation heart that is clearly only there for decoration um, has an alt text of support Django. Um, the point of the alt text is to describe the image. I, I don't think that's a good description at all. This should just be considered a decorative image. Okay, so those buttons look pretty decent for those forms. Okay, so in the footer. Yeah, so we have quite a few images of text, but they all have alt text. That's pretty good. Uh, so one thing I, I haven't touched on at all, but is obviously quite problematic with this website, is uh, the color contrast. So I've now turned on my automated tests. And uh, yeah, it's not really a surprise, but um, all those shades of green just haven't been picked with accessibility in mind. Uh, very few of those combinations pass weak eyed contrast checks. Doesn't necessarily mean that lots of people will find them really, really hard to do, but um, I guess some people definitely will. And it's a bit of a fundamental design flow that so many of those shades of gray haven't been picked with this in mind. So um, yeah, in part we are against this gray background. So that's just like a part of the design that makes it even harder to do those things is if you commonly display things like link text colors against pure white and shades of gray, it just makes it even harder. And yeah, as well, that's, I'd expect this kind of uh, meta text might work out fine against the white but not against this gray. So probably would make sense to either lose the gray here, move this in the single column, or just pick much darker shades for those colors that pass against both those gray backgrounds and the main white section. Yeah, so color contrast failures basically everywhere around the site. Um, if we look at the CSS overview in the developer tools. You can see all the shades of colors and we can see which ones have contrast issues. So uh, th this should say zero in the site in, in this day and age. There's really no 
no reason why a site should ship with a design that has that many contrast issues. Um, yeah, it's also a bit concerning that there is so many shades of grey for text color. This should be much fewer in number. I assume this red there is just because of the annotations from my testing tool. So what else we can can we try? So I had my uh, browser font resizing. Okay, that all seems to work fine. Uh, we'll have a look at this mobile navigation menu later. Back to top. The the use of uppercase text like this is something I'd consider an ideal. Um, it's a bit shouty to start with and generally considered harder to read than title case or just sentence case. So generally I'd recommend avoiding uppercase unless there is a clear design reason to do it. Uh, it just yeah, it just looks like the site is shouting at me to be honest and for things like the top level menu it, it does make it harder to kind of pass the words since they are all very monotone in, in style. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's good, good to see the site supporting uh, font resizing. Oh, I didn't check. Yeah, so I guess one potential improvement there would be for the icons like the theme switcher and images of text like in the footer here to resize as well, since they, they do act as text as well. So we can try also page level zoom. It's good to try and put it at 400%, which is what Wikiag recommends for testing to make sure that the text overflow doesn't break the page. Um, yeah, so here I see some layout issues. So probably there's an element somewhere that yeah, are overflowing their containers. So this could be quite problematic for someone who, again, has low vision and relies on those features to navigate the site. Um, I could also see very briefly up there that we had this one button. Yeah, so this button being edge to edge, um, that's quite problematic for people who are on a mobile device with touch and might try to scroll with touch past this button. They might unintentionally click the button um, so people who have Parkinson's disease in part three are find it quite hard to do precise motion with their thumb on mobile devices and would, might not be able to get past um, this specific button. So just adding um, margins to the side like is done for, for this button right there, uh, even such a small margin might already help quite a bit with making sure there's always this area people can, can scroll into safely. And yes, yeah, so the mobile menu. Um, okay, so that's lacking keyboard support. Um, so this is quite problematic uh, because yeah, so some people will get the mobile experience even on desktop because they might have this zoomed in that far to see the words and. Uh, yeah, so effectively this means they can't use the navigation of the site, which is quite a quite a problem. So they'd have to know to go to the footer and from the footer navigate in there. Um, what have we not tried yet? Oh, so we could try a um, forced colors mode which is an emulation of a Windows feature called contrast themes or Windows high contrast mode. So it overrides the colors of the page so that there is more contrast between the text and the background. Um, so right away we could see that the, the Django logo has disappeared. So clearly the Django logo here isn't compatible with false colors mode. It should be a relatively simple fix, but definitely one that should happen. Um, We've also lost the distinction between the header area and the main content, between the sidebar and the main content, because again, they were done with uh, backgrounds only. So maybe just adding extra borders around these 
the layout is easier to understand and borders around those buttons as well so they are easier to tell apart from other content and so you know where the clickable area is otherwise it seems to be looking pretty reasonable uh, again the only issue I can, I can see really in that mode is um, lack of distinction between the link text and normal text the fact that it's just the color just means that again if someone doesn't perceive colors very well they'll have lots of trouble figuring out which of these is the link text so yeah it's just, just plain impossible here to tell what's a link and what's not a link Um, so the last thing I'll try is probably to uh, so we'll stop emulating force colors and vision deficiency and we'll look at the print style sheet of the site so the reason for that quite simply is uh, some people do rely on printing the site so they can read it more easily um, on paper so it's useful to look at this and see what it's like so the navigation is gone um, that feels like a good thing, but I'd expect the theme switcher to be gone as well, if we if we went for that. Um, it'd be useful for the buttons and links to have their link URL next to them, so you know which pages things are looking at, things are linking to, sorry. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's a bit strange. So I noticed that the, the footer content is still there again that feels completely superfluous if you're trying to read the contents of this specific page you wouldn't care about printing the contents of the footer and uh, it's really concerning that the sidebar is gone on the other hand so the sidebar definitely at least on this page isn't um, secondary information so it feels pretty strange that it would have just uh, yeah, but just been hidden like that. Um, so the form fields as well have been hidden, I guess. Feels a bit... Not sure that's quite necessary, but I guess... Because it makes it makes the page a bit harder to understand, but I guess, I guess it does feel like this might not be helpful on a print version. Debatable. But yeah, the, the sidebar not being present is... Um, with things like the news listings in there is a bit concerning that is very concerning anyway I, I'll leave it there for today and again this is just with what's in Chrome no screen reader no specific assistive tech um, so fundamental issues to recap um, support, support for keyboard navigation seems quite poor no skip link poor focus indications uh, just the fact that the sidebar is off uh, with content on that is quite important makes it quite hard to navigate to that um, the colors need a lot of rethinking because it's hard to tell links apart because text isn't sim simply isn't readable enough as it stands and uh, yeah otherwise there seems to be lots of room for improvement for support of specific assistive tech um, better categorization of the page content with headings um, a few landmark improvements and um, yeah, for us, I think that's, that's the gist of it.